Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining our webinar today. Um, glad you can make it. Uh, so this webinar today is um, for medical packaging materials, unique foams and films for, suitable for clean environments. Um, before we get started with the, the presentation, there's just a few quick things uh, I wanted to cover. Uh, the presentation should last about 45 minutes. That includes some time at the end for question and answer. And during the presentation, um, if you have any questions at all, just feel free to, to write them in the chat window, um, and we'll respond to them at the end. Um, also, if you elected to receive a material sample kit, we'll ship those out by the end of this week. Um, there will be a, a selection of various um, foams and films and plastics that we talk about today. And um, just a little background about who's going to be speaking and giving the presentation. Um, Ron Valerio, he's um, been working in the medical packaging space um, for UFP Technologies for over 20 years. He, he works closely with packaging engineers and product development teams of some of the largest medical device and orthopedic implant manufacturers in the world. So um, to get things started, I'm going to hand it over to Ron, and uh, we'll get going. Thank you. So thank you, Tom. Um, I'm Ron Valerio, and if um, you're joining us on the East Coast here, good afternoon. There are a few people on the West Coast, so good morning. And we actually do have a few folks uh, from Europe calling in, so good evening to you. I'd like to review and thank you for uh, joining us on our medical packaging materials webinar uh, today. Just like to review with you um, the agenda. And while we're coming on the next slide, I'd like to just uh, go over what we're going to cover in a short period of time. So. Um, we're going to uh, just give you an uh, overview of who UFP Technologies is. Uh, the materials that we're going to be talking about today are cross-linked polyethylene foams, uh, TPU, otherwise known as thermoplastic polyurethane films, some rigid plastics, and then some capabilities in our clean room fabrication methods. And then, as Tom indicated, we will have some questions at the end. So um, I'd like to begin by uh, telling you a little bit about UFP. Uh, UFP is a producer of innovative custom engineered packaging, components, products, and specialty materials. So using uh, foams, plastics, and composites, and natural fiber materials, we essentially develop and manufacture a vast range of solutions for the medical, automotive, aerospace, and defense, electronic, consumer, and industrial markets. Uh, UFP is a public company. We're listed on the New York Stock Exchange. And we have really a global presence in materials. Um, and we operate 11 U.S. manufacturing facilities. So we have certainly a large depth and breadth of active accounts. And more importantly, we have business relationships with customers and a portfolio of products that really have helped shape innovation for many organizations for over 50 years. These relationships really have provided UFP a large and growing customer base with successful results and, uh, as you can see, leading markets uh, for really many years. Let's talk about uh, one of these materials that um, has unique capabilities, and that's what is called cross-linked polyethylene. So let's look at this material that UFP has had really an extensive knowledge and expertise in creating solutions for many years. Some of the uh, listed properties here are some general attributes of uh, cross-linked polyethylene foam, otherwise known as XLPE, that may, you may already be uh, aware of. There's really a whole world or a whole range of cross-linked polyethylene foams uh, produced today. So uh, you don't need to be an expert in all of these foams and these densities and uh, properties, et cetera. This is really where we can help you. So I think really the most important takeaway from this webinar session today is that you really have a knowledge and a resource of where to go, where we um, can help select and find the right materials for you, your requirements, really is an important step in this whole process. You know, cross-linked polyethylenes have widely been known as an excellent material used and accepted in the medical device industry to 
package and protect um, instruments, components, implants, and other surgical devices inside and outside a sterile barrier system. There's obviously a long provenance of leading medical uh, device manufacturers today specifying who have used or specified <clears throat> this material um, and asked for this material to be packaged to protect their products. So to give you an example of where um, and how cross-link polyethylene foams can be used, this picture here shows an instrument tray that uh, was used to uh, use to package a um, surgical instrumentation kit. Uh, not only protect and package it, but display it and display these surgical instruments. Um, this insert not only, again, as I said, protects the instruments through the distribution cycle, but really organizes it and gives you a visual gives the surgeon or the operating attendant a visual display and an indication that all the instruments are there and they're kitted. So this particular specialized material is a Zote Foams material, LD33 to be specific. Uh, this was selected after, uh, after our engineers and the customers, packaging engineers, consulted and reached a uh, certain grade and type of material that met their requirements. Obviously, texture and feel are an important consideration. So this material's requirements uh, not only needed to be, not only needed to protect the instrument, but really needed the material to be uh, what we call hydrophobic or non-moisture absorbing material. So an open cell foam in this case would not have naturally been a solution because these open cell foams naturally absorb moisture during the distribution cycle and really may have affected what this uh, specialized finish on these uh, instruments are during the distribution process. So in this case here, the instruments had a special metal texture on it and a finish that would really tarnish after being uh, exposed and or affected any type of moisture for any periods of time. So this Zotfoam material had the appropriate um, density and cell structure not to outgas um, any blowing agents. You see, most of these cross-link polyethylenes are expanded or blown with a chemical. In this case here with this manufacturer, Zote Foams is um, expanded through a natural process using nitrogen, which is really an inert material. And uh, I'll talk a little bit more about this later, but uh, in this case, um, any outgassing may have affected the texture of the instruments or the surface finish on the in instruments by tarnishing it. So working with the customer's packaging engineers as well as our own 40 or more um, engineers on staff here, we selected the appropriate grade, type, and density of material to uh, package this uh, specialized um, surgical instrumentation kit. There's other examples. Um, that I'm going to show here of where we've used uh, cross-link polyethylene foam. Here's a great example of an orthopedic implant uh, packaging solution. We've done many of them and have many of them in our portfolio, but here's again an excellent example of really a specialized femur implant. So this plant implant here that you see in the photograph had a special coating on it. The coating uh, was applied by the manufacturer. It's an HA type coating also known as hypoapatate coating, and it's applied to the surface of the implant to really accelerate bone growth. So working with this customer to select the right and appropriate material is extremely important. So again, our engineers recommended a unique material, again, Zote foams with specialized properties this time. And this foam, again, as I indicated earlier, is expanded by a nitrogen process versus all the others which are chemically uh, expanded. Uh, so a chemically expand, expanded or blown foam material would have maybe affected the HA coating on it. This is where understanding the requirements is extremely important, where this HA coating could have been affected by any of the outgassing of the chemically blown foams. Therefore, using a Zote foam material that has been expanded with nitrogen was the perfect fit for it. The other uh, interesting aspect is that it was compression molded. So that was not only to hold and position the implant 
uh, in a sterile barrier packaging system, but it was really used in a combination of different materials that I'd like to have you consider because sometimes a mono material is really not the total solution. So in this case, this compression molded zote foam type material was developed and formed along with a thermal form PETG tray, in a tray, outer tray, that had Tyvek lids on them, and that was subject to uh, gamma sterilization. Another consideration, uh, to con another thing to consider also is that not all foams are uh, sterilizable by the same methods. Some cross-linked polyethylenes can withstand uh, some dosages of gamma sterilization. Some cross-linked polyethylenes can't withstand ETO sterilization. So using us as a resource, we can help direct and guide you to the right and appropriate material for your uh, packaging solution. So this fabrication uh, method that we used here, compression molding, uh, was also used to help kind of mitigate or eliminate any particulation. You see when you compression mold a product like this, you're naturally skinning or sealing the material. So particulation obviously is a um, something you want to avoid in any sterile barrier packaging system. So the appropriate selection of material with the right properties, with the right manufacturing method produced an outstanding example of addressing a lot of customer needs um, with this orthopedic implant, uh, special orthopedic implant. Let me also introduce you to some, or another material that UFP has really pioneered, and that's TPU, uh, thermoplastic polyurethane. Um, TPU is used to support a different set of requirements for some medical implant device and component protection. Here are some of the properties or uh, widely known um, attributes of TPU. So, TPU or thermoplastic polyurethane, or really as widely known today as Flex Shield, is a material that has properties to address specific needs and requirements. Um, that being surface abrasion and puncture resistance. TPU is also uh, available in a lot of different grades. It's FDA approved. Um, it's uh, capable of being gamma sterilized and it can also be subject to ETO sterilization when not used in a primary sterile barrier system, which I'll explain in a moment. I want to uh, <clears throat> show you another example of an orthopedic implant here, uh, but it has, a diff it has different characteristics, as you can see. So why we use and help the customer specify TPU is that this component here had a beaded coating on it, as you can see in this photograph. Very aggressive, abrasive material. But again, the beading was uh, there for the purposes of the patient's bone growth into the uh, implant. Um, this material, when packaged, could uh, potentially develop particulation, um, if not packaged in the right materials. Um, also, this device uh, could actually compromise the sterile barrier system if the beading on it was aggressive enough to go through the sterile barrier packaging system. Um, I can just go back. Here we've come up with a solution to use TPU or Flex Shield as a uh, material. Again, it's abrasion resistance qualities so that it wouldn't develop particulation in the uh, sterile barrier field. And this abrasion resistance, and again, I'm going to give you an example of puncture resistance, was a perfect, perfect solution. So these pouches were developed with a uh, customer on an implant such as this to provide a number of different size pouches that were RF welded to prevent the uh, aggressive beating from uh, developing or compromising the sterile barrier system. This would have went in um, a, a TPU, uh, this TPU pouch would have went in a uh, PETG blister and probably would have been uh, Tyvek sealed, would have been subject to gamma sterilization. So this is another example uh, of a similar implant product, different coating on it, using different 
uh, materials that we help the customer select. Also, um, we have helped develop uh, this FlexShield product as a pouch system that uh, could protect the uh, implant again from the abrasion and the aggressive beading coating. So the TPU FlexShield product line can be uh, used inside of a sterile barrier system here. So we've helped customers develop, design a full line of pouches uh, shown here that is used in orthopedic packaging of screws, rods, and other surgical uh, instruments. This example of um, using FlexShield to protect surgical cutting instrument, which is what you see here on your screen, is a, a rather unique uh, aspect and byproduct of thermoplastic polyurethane TPU. Uh, what we have here is a cutting system, a surgical cutting device that would need that needed to be put in a sterile barrier system to be uh, sterilized. Uh, we utilize the whole line of flex shield pouches um, to prevent the uh, puncture resistance of a blade that's at the end of that um, cutting device that you see there um, within the sterile barrier system. Here the customer used really a pre-validated Tyvek pouch that they already had uh, in their portfolio. They selected a number of different size flex shield pouches to accommodate the um, size differential on the cutting instrument. And it protected the flex shield pouch actually protected uh, the whole instrument during the uh, packaging uh, cycle. Uh, this device, again, as I said, is a cutting tool, so it has very sharp uh, features to it, and it really could cut through other packaging materials like uh, PTU, uh, uh, a PETG blister or a Tyvek lid, so it's very important to be able to have a material that could be packaged and protected and here you see an example of uh, how we think through the entire uh, process with packaging engineers. And so this pouch that you see now is being opened by an attendant or an operating nurse, and it's being presented inside the operating room. So um, this has a perforation at about the midpoint to extract the instrument um, and present it into the sterile field. So thinking through that whole process with uh, the packaging engineers, both on staff at the customer as well as our own engineers. Uh, it's important that we really think through this whole process. We go through uh, extra effort of sometimes um, working with attendant, nurse attendants and getting feedback and focus groups to be sure that not only is the product packaged and protected, but uh, essentially during access to the material it has uh, really good accessibility and can be easily you know, uh, used during the uh, operating procedure. Again, you're seeing on this screen uh, flex shield pouches are used in really a wide range of products such as uh, uh, you're seeing here. So you've got some orthopedic rods, screws, and other devices that have sharp or abrasive features that could puncture uh, a material or really compromise a sterile barrier product. So you, on the right-hand side, you see an orthopedic screw that has a very sharp uh, point at the end. Uh, that's packaged in a smaller flex shield pouch, um, capable of being sterilized, again, by gamma or ETO. There's various grades, textures, and thicknesses, or gauge thicknesses of TPU. <clears throat> um, the manufacturing methods that we use to develop these products uh, are capable of being heat sealed or RF welded and even thermoformed into three-dimensional shapes. So if you have a product or a device that has these features of abrasiveness or any other sharp instruments that could affect your packaging system, uh, feel free to give us a call or contact us. We can help you design the right um, solution for your application by using FlexShield. Uh, the material, too, also has uh, the ability to have uh, a different texture on the inside and outside. So to give an example, um, the uh, cutting tool that you see in the middle of that slide had a uh, essentially a, a slick finish on the inside, a finish that has a high coefficient of friction that would keep that in place uh, so as not to have a lot of movement inside to prevent those sharp blades at the end from eating through anything. 
Uh, the outside had a matte finish, which was uh, you know easily accessible, easy to hold, and easy to perforate. So uh, please consider TPU or Flex Shield um, when you've got applications that have puncture resistant and uh, abrasion resistant needs. Uh, it's an excellent material. Um, we find that in using a combination of these materials, such as TPU and uh, foams, and our next subject, which is rigid plastics, uh, there is really not, you know, there's very often not a mono material out there that's going to solve the entire solution and requirements. So uh, the beauty here is, is that we have a portfolio of a, a wide range of materials uh, to offer as solutions and used in combination can be really an effective solution. Um, packaging today's unique and uh, changing surgical instruments, implants um, in the marketplace. So the other material I'd like to quickly discuss with you is something you may be familiar with, but UFP has a long established history with using and designing rigid plastics as a solution to package uh, medical devices. Here in this picture are many uh, rigid plastic materials you may be familiar with or you might have used in the past. So um, there are trays, blisters, and other configurations um, that we've uh, shown here. But one of these is um, I want to call your attention to is the one on the right-hand corner, um, the light blue one. Um, just to tell you a small story about that situation. That is a uh, procedure kit, a preparation kit. has a lot of uh, definition to it, but um, one of the requirements here was that this is a high volume uh, project. had a relatively lower value uh, to it because it's a surgical preparation kit, so inside would have been uh, pipettes and gauze and liquid materials to prep the patient prior to surgery. So. Um, with all things considered, it wasn't an extremely high-valued product, but yet it had high volume to it and wanted to be uh, packaged in an appropriate material. Now, what we chose uh, in concert with the customer is a high-impact polystyrene material, which we thermoformed. Why we selected that is that it met all the requirements of packaging this uh, surgical preparation kit, but yet it could have been packaged in some other material, like a PETG, but here again, there was requirements and cost considerations relative to um, this lower value, lower cost item. So appropriately putting it in a material that, again, met the packaging requirements um, and a cost-effective method was the best choice for this particular customer. So these uh, rigid plastics that you see here have obviously many different characteristics and properties that can meet um, a lot of different needs. Uh, this um, surgical preparation kit uh, was one example, but as you see here, we've got exposure to uh, an abused uh, thermoplastic, uh, rigid plastics uh, for a long period of time. Um, ABS, PET, PETGs are just some of the more familiar rigid plastic materials that we've helped customers provide solutions in thermal forming. Some of our clean room fabrication methods, um, we have uh, many clean rooms, uh, typically class 100,000 clean rooms, class 8, um, to um, package uh, and produce product. Our methods in the clean room uh, can comprise of die cutting, uh, RF welding, sealing, heat sealing, and thermal forming and compression molding of uh, a number of different materials. Our locations around the country, as I, we indicate, I indicated earlier, we have 11 locations. Um, you see some of our manufacturing facilities here and our engineering centers. I guess the, um, the interesting thing here is that we're a national company and the important thing is we have scalability. So it's not all that unusual to be working with some packaging engineers in the Midwest where a product would get actually produced out of maybe one of our East Coast plants and uh, sent to um, the customer site relatively close by. Or conversely, it could have been developed out of uh, one of our West Coast manufacturing facilities and uh, distributed to the customer's location uh, closer to them. So in, uh, 
This other slide you're indicating is seeing is our capabilities with some of our plants and our manufacturing facilities relative to uh, being ISO 13485 certified. So again, the scalability, <coughs> scalability aspect of it, um, as you can see, um, we have an FDA registered facility on the West Coast and uh, five or six uh, ISO 13485 uh, plants to produce um, and design and produce uh, medical packaging uh, solutions and materials. At this point, I'd like to um, just pause for a moment and see if there are any questions coming in. Feel free to uh, type any of these in on the uh, chat board, and um, we'd be happy to address them at this time. Some questions um, in the past have been, um, are there different types or thicknesses or densities available for crosslink polyethylene foams that you have mentioned? Uh, yes. Um, as a matter of fact, as I indicated, there's a whole world of crosslink polyethylene foams. Not all of them are expanded and produced in the same way. Uh, again, I want to just, again, reiterate the fact that you, you don't need to be uh, knowledgeable or expert in all of the manufactured crosslink polyethylenes. We can help you with that. That's where our years of experience with crosslink polyethylene can be uh, of value to you. But um, there is uh, different grades, different thicknesses uh, available in crosslink uh, polyethylene foams. There are many different raw material manufacturers. Um, the grades and thicknesses are all somewhat predicated on um, densities, and uh, there's a wide range of colors associated with it. Some other questions that have uh, been asked in the past is, uh, is there any technical uh, data information relative to any of these materials? And yes, I think Tom indicated in the beginning of the presentation that we have a small sample kit that will be going out to uh, everyone who has attended um, this webinar this afternoon, uh, but we do have a, um, a library and a vast array of some technical data information to help you uh, with selecting the right material, with helping you uh, develop, you know, your own validation uh, protocols for your sterile barrier packaging system. We have a question here, are uh, any particular uh, films you recommend as a sterile barrier for products with ETO sterilization. So, um, you know, ETO obviously you're um, uh, obviously familiar with uh, is a different sterilization method. Um, films specifically, uh, what we try to do with uh, our TPU product essentially is have that as a secondary barrier within a uh, sterile barrier system. Uh, with ETO, you have to uh, obviously vent and or have the ability to outgas the uh, ethylene oxide. So uh, flex shield in and of itself would be used as a second uh, or not the primary barrier. Uh, so there's a question here in regard to either side showing of the blue and white crosslink polyethylene foam surgical kit insert. Are there any other concerns with particulate generating from a die cut? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, it's very important um, to be able to select the right manufacturing method. Obviously, uh, we have capabilities that um, in routing, as an example, with routing or milling out foam, you wouldn't want to be using that in a sterile barrier system because of the high ability or high concentration of particulate it made to develop. We find that molding and or selectively die cutting uh, products with uh, some specialized die cutting equipment uh, can eliminate and mitigate any particulation. So it's an excellent question of finding the right and appropriate method of cutting uh, and fabricating these foam materials specifically is really an important consideration. I think when I showed you that slide earlier of that compression molded femur insert, you know, particulation was a, uh, of great concern to the end user, uh, the customer in that situation. 
That's why we went with a compression molded uh, solution to essentially skin or um, naturally skin a product uh, out of the compression molding process so that there wouldn't be any particulation. We have another question here. Uh, do we partner with uh, companies from a packaging design concept stage? Yes. Uh, very often we will be involved with uh, subcontractors or design companies um, on a very frequent basis that we would consult in. Um, so yes, we'd welcome that uh, opportunity. Um, at any time, just uh, feel free to give us a call at this 800 number or visit our website. We'll put you in touch with uh, one of our engineers, and we'd be happy to do uh, a partnering situation with either a design house or a subcontractor. So this is a great question, um, testing. We're talking about testing here. So we are currently in the process of developing a, um, a test uh, a, a series of testing on all of our materials that I've talked about here, specifically TPU, um, where um, you know most of these protocols, most of these validations, the customer in and of itself develops its own protocol, does its own testing, but we are uh, performing uh, testing on uh, TPU as well as cross-link thermal, uh, cross-link polyethylene materials. Um, for um, certain testing like toxicity and bio burden and um, we're going to be having those results available to uh, our customers in a pretty short period of time. We are about three quarters of the way through the testing process. A lot of criteria developed including shelf life testing. So a uh, great question and thank you. That's soon to come. So question, what comes in the sample kit? So I think uh, what will probably be in the sample kit will be uh, a series of um, some types of thermoformic uh, TPU materials, i.e. flex shield materials, and maybe a pouch or two. Uh, we'll probably describe or give you a uh, sample of a cross-link polyethylene molded foam product or an insert. There will be some technical information probably within there as well as a few brochures and there may even be a thermal form tray which uh, will demonstrate our thermal forming capabilities um, in that sample kit that will be coming your way. If there's any other interest beyond what you see in the sample kit, again, feel free to uh, contact us at any time um, not to uh, send you a extremely large sample kit. We've selected a few items that generally would describe our material and our process and uh, give you an example or a sample of what those are. So if there's something more that you need, feel free to contact us. So the question here, in what situations would you choose uh, cross-link versus a, well it says a closed cell PU foam. Uh, most of the PU foams, which are polyurethane, are open celled. Um, there are a few specialized uh, PU foams that are closed cell. But uh, in, in most situations, um, you're looking at an open cell product and a closed cell product. A lot of the, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of the polyurethane foams um, really don't have the ability to be three-dimensionally molded. Um, for instance, uh, compression molding, as we've shown you an example of earlier, would not be capable of being, PU foam would not be capable of being compression molded. Um, the big concern with close uh, open cell uh, polyurethane type foams is, um, you know, it, it is an open cell material. It is, you know, absorbent of moisture, and it does have a uh, somewhat a degree of particulation associated with it because of its open cell nature. Um, situations we would use is that obviously if particulation is an issue, we would need to eliminate it or mitigate it one of the appropriate methods would be to um, utilize a cross-link over a closed cell foam. Um, so again, depending upon the specific requirements, there's uh, not only cost considerations, but um, 
some uh, sterilization methods are um, different uh, with these two different materials as well. So uh, another question, um, are any of our manufacturing facilities monitored for micro microbial contamination? If so, what sorts of limits are in place? Um, as I indicated, um, our facilities are 13485 certified. Um, the monitoring of those, I couldn't tell you specifically from one site to the other, uh, but it is a good question. And um, if um, you'd like any further information, we could get specific with you on what uh, sites uh, UFP has that would monitor microbial contamination. Well, I want to thank you for uh, your time this afternoon, um, for joining us. I uh, hope some of this information was informative. I think there's some new materials here that uh, you should consider uh, for some of your applications. But the most important thing and the takeaway, as I indicated earlier, is that um, you know this was not intended to make you an expert in foams and films and uh, plastics, but more importantly, to give you another resource, a way to go, and uh, to get help in helping you select the right and appropriate materials. Uh, hope this was informative for you and hope to see you at a future webinar. Thank you very much.